Today's reading is from the book of Psalms, um, chapter 78, verses 1 through 8. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together this morning as a covenant fellowship, as a covenant family, to hear your word, to understand what you're doing through your grace for teaching us how we can continue to grow in faith and service through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here with you, and I want to say thank you. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Signals back there. Sorry. Sorry. It's good to be here with you. Thank you very much, first of all, to Pastor Chris and to the elders for giving me the privilege of baptizing and being the one to baptize in in your name and in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit my grandson simeon and it's certainly a privilege to be here but it's something we do together it's something that we do as a church fellowship as a church family as those who have been welcomed into the household of god the first apostles were all jews and they would have understand that they understood that the old testament covenant sign was practiced right away at the end of a first, as soon as a male child was a week old. And if they had chosen to exclude infants from baptism, such an important change probably would have been mentioned. At least that's what some of us have to have come to, to believe as we look at scripture. And if it's a surprise to some of you, we do not believe that baptism saves a child. It's the welcome into the covenant family here on earth. Salvation comes only through the redemption work by Jesus Christ on the cross. But as we come together, it's a time when the parents and we as representatives of Christ's church on earth covenant with God to say we will do what we can so that Simeon and the others who come into the fellowship of the church know what the faith is. This is what is said in Psalm 78, the opening verses that we just heard read, where the people of Israel would sing this psalm as a hymn. This was a hymn they would sing from time to time as a reminder of what they were called on to do as members of the believing family. And they say, we will not hide what God has done from our children. We will tell it to the coming generation. We'll tell the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, the wonders that he's done. And they go on to say it's not just for our children, but it's to prepare our children so they can tell their children. And the passing on from generation to generation. Verse 8 ended with a warning, though. And that was part of the hymn, that there were generations in the history of Israel that forgot to do that, that strayed away. Psalm, 70, Psalm 78 goes on to share many things from the history of Israel, and particularly to warn about the things that Israel did wrong. Verses 9 and 10 say they lacked in obedience. They were not faithful to their calling. They lacked faith in believing God could do his part, verse 22 tells us. The end of the of the chapter verses 56 to 61 says they lacked in purity in giving their lives as they should to to the Lord and practicing it 
And so they went astray time and time again, and it's the same danger we have. It's why we come together as a fellowship to learn. But first of all, we want to remember what we do have to share. We can look back at the Israelites who sang this hymn, who sang this song. They had many things to share. They'd been delivered from slavery in Egypt. They were given a land in which to live. But they were also given what we often call the Ten Commandments, but the, the Jewish people often simply call the words from God. Those words from God that remind us that there is one God, and anything that demands our time, our talents, our treasure in the place of that one God, God calls idolatry because it takes us away from him. But those commandments, those ten words from God go on to talk about respect for parents, respect for life, respect for marriage, respect for property, honesty and integrity in all our dealings and relationships with each other, respect also for healthy balance in our lifestyle with time for productivity and time for rest as well. They had things to talk about, and we as a Christian people, these are things that we need to be communicating to the generation. These are the treasures God has given us to share, to build into the lives of our children and to practice ourselves. Our kids have maybe told you something about how they came to the name that they have adopted. It's always a story, and there's always personal things involved. But Simeon, as was mentioned in the prayer, Simeon was that man, a devout and, and godly man, who was waiting for Messiah to come. Simeon, our Simeon, was born in December, and we often think during the Advent and Christmas season of that personality, Simeon, who was there at the temple and who welcomed the Christ child. There's another Simeon in Acts chapter 13 who was a leader in the church at Antioch and who was one of those involved in sending Paul and Barnabas on their missionary journey. And uh, it's a reminder that church leaders are called on to work in sending out missions. A second name is Todd, and Uncle Todd is here today. You have given of your time and your talents to your nieces, to your nephews, to your, their families as well, and that heritage lives on. The third name, Hagen, is to not forget the Midwest farming family and the great-grandparents that, uh, that are there that were known in that area for their integrity, for their honesty in dealing in the local community and trustworthiness. The clothes that Simeon wore this morning uh, was the same outfit that grandfather Bill Smith wore at his baptism a few years ago, he tells me. <laughs> These names all speak of a godly heritage that's being passed on to the next generation. But John and Sarah's had to go out, You'll probably hear me through the, the mic system now that it's turned on. You can't do it alone. You're called on to do that, but you can't do it alone. And this is why baptism takes part, takes place right in an ordinary church service when the whole church family is gathered together. Because we as representatives of the church of Jesus Christ, we engage as well into that task. For the first decade, perhaps, you'll be his biggest influence. But as Simeon gets into the teenage years, there's a need that there be others of the church family that are around him, that encourage him, that give him models, that he sees others growing. I think, Jonathan, you saw that in your own life, and it's so important that the church be there, that we be there as the covenant family, the covenant fellowship, leading their, our children on. So this is a holy calling, not simply to the parents, not, not simply even to the elders and the teaching elder that that welcome the child, but the whole church. Our first calling is that of passing on to the next generation, to children, if God gives us children in our own household, but also to the other children and to the other newcomers that are welcomed into the body of Christ. When I'm not, I, Diane and I still travel a good bit, but when we're not traveling, we regularly attend at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church it's an EPC church in Warren, Warrenville, Illinois. One of the things we discovered they have 
is that every teenager in the church has a mentor. Another member, an adult member of the church that meets with them every week. To ask how they're doing, find out how, how, you know, what's going on in their life. To pray with them, to encourage them, to just be that extra adult that's there to encourage that teenager in, in his life. This is the calling we're called to first of all. What can we do? And we need to be able to sing those kind of hymns. And I noticed uh, Generation was in the first hymn that we, the first song we sang this morning. But sing the hymns like Psalm 78 that the Jewish people read. We will not hide these from our children. We will teach them in a way that they can pass it on to their children and to their children's children because this psalm call, talks about four generations. Some of us are called to go on, maybe in specialized mission of one kind or another. And for Diane and me, this has been our privilege in life. It's something we won't change for anything. That God led us to the mission field, that God led us to other cultures, that God enabled us to see churches being being built in France. During the 30-some years we were there in France, and not because of us, certainly because God and His Spirit were working, we saw the number of evangelical churches in France double during that 30-year period. When we went to France, there were areas of spiritual desert, of evangelical desert, where there, for 50 miles around there wouldn't be an evangelical church. And today, every major city and most major towns in France do have churches. God is doing his work. But I do remind you that Jesus, before he left this world, and in Matthew, the end of the gospel, Jesus says these words that are often called the Great Commission and must never be called the Great Omission in the life of the church. All authority, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Baptism and teaching come together. Baptism is not some magic act that accomplishes anything. Jesus uses teaching before and after the word baptism. Teaching is part of it. And a child baptism implies that the parents may take these engaged, these commitments to see that their child hears and learns, learns to, for himself what are the promises from God. But it's a calling that Jesus left with his apostles and through them to us. Fifty years ago of this year, at a great congress on evangelism that was held in Berlin in 1966, John Stott, an Englishman, said, gave this summary of the Great Commission. Jesus' authority on earth allows us to dare to go to all the nations. Now, in 1966, it was the time of the Cold War. This Congress on Evangelism was held in Berlin. He says, Jesus' authority is what gives us allows us to dare to go to all the nations. He continues, his authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success. It's not that we're going to accomplish it, but through his spirit. And his presence with us leaves us no other choice. And so I share with you what God is doing in the world as well. This is not something to hide, but something to be enthusiastic about. France, we've seen while we were there, the number of evangelical churches double. Southeast Asia is an area that uh, we've only come to visit a, a little bit in the last few years since we came back from France. Diane and I will be going to an international church in Cambodia for two months later this year. They have a missionary pastor who's coming home on a short furlough. We've been asked to fill in for the months of November and December to take them through the Christmas season. Average Sunday attendance right now is up to 185 in that English-speaking church in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. And hopefully it will continue at least at that rate. And we do ask for prayer 
as we go into that and have that responsibility the next year of leading a congregation in another part of the world through, through uh, the Christmas season. But because of that church, others have been started in the Khmer language, in the, the Chinese language, going out into the land of Cambodia. Things are going on. And recently, we spoke with somebody who goes for training into Algeria in North Africa. Algeria is a nation of about 30, 32, 33 million people. 10 million, one third of that population are the native Berber people that lived there before the Arabs came in and took over North Africa. St. Augustine, the church father, was probably a Berber. Islam has been imposed on these people for a millennia. But thanks to Christian television programs, the gospel is now being proclaimed. And today, and this is something that this person was sharing with us by Skype just a couple weeks ago, thanks to Christian satellite programming, these people have been coming back to Christ, and this missionary who can't live in the country, because the country's closed to permanent missionaries, but people can go in and out. She says, every village in the Berber area has an evangelical church in Algeria today, including one church building that will hold 1,500 people in one of the bigger towns. This is in North Africa. This is going on. This is something that we can, we, we can thank God for. It's close to traditional mission work, but God is doing its work. God is building his church. We're thankful for that. We're thankful to be part of the missionary body. We as Christians are called on to transmit, to communicate what we have. We do it, we start with the children, with the newcomers, with the people that God brings into our life. Some are called to go, some are called to support, and we certainly wouldn't be able to go if there weren't those to support. We're all called to pray. We're all called to pass it on so that the generation that follows not only knows the truth, but lives it and can share it with the generation that follows. We're part of a chain. We're links in the chain that go back 2,000 years to Christ, that go back even more, twice that probably, to Abraham and beyond. But our God is a God of mission. And he calls all of us into this mission. And baptism is one of the reminders. We start even with a little child. But your attitudes and mine are part of that. Come help out for the Easter egg hunt. Bring the kids in. We don't want to hide from them what God has given us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Simeon's birth. And with the parents, we're thankful that the pregnancy went as well as it did. We have a healthy child. We pray, Lord, for the other children that you bring into the world and that you bring into our covenant fellowships. May we welcome them in your name. May we remember the treasures that you want to give them. May we give our time, our talents, our treasure, that your truths will be shared with others. We pray through Jesus' name. Amen.